esports are a big deal nowadays. It's a kind of video game competition where lots of people get together, including professionals and spectators. Do you know when the first esports event was? It was in 1980, Atari's Space Invaders Championship. It was won by Rebecca Hyman, a legendary computer scientist who has created hundreds of video games and who is still at it. Anyway, in the next section of this course, we're going to make our very own, very simple version of Space Invaders. Like the design recipe tells us to, let's begin by writing some basic data definitions. One of the things that we're going to have a lot of in this game is invaders. Let's write a data definition for what an invader is. This is something that you might be familiar with because an invader is going to have at least two pieces of information that we're going to have to keep track of. We need to keep track of the x coordinate and the y coordinate because the invader can move both horizontally and vertically. So we need at least two numbers for each invader. We need to put those numbers together in a structure. Let's define such a structure called the invader. Now, you might think, do we need to put anything else in invader? For example, in the actual Space Invader game, which I hope you will be able to play soon at the Cade, an invader doesn't just move on the screen horizontally and vertically, it also changes in shape. So it would seem that we need to store the shape of an invader. In general, what we need to store are things that change and that matter. Now, in this simplified version of the game, we're only going to have one shape of invaders. Every invader is going to be the same shape. So even though in some sense the shape matters, we need the shape to draw the invader, it doesn't change. So we don't need to store it. In this simple version of Space Invaders, the only things that change and matter are the x and the y coordinates. So what we have here is enough. Just as a reminder, let me write out the courtesy functions that are provided when we write a structure definition like this one. We're going to have a constructor. We're going to have two selectors because our structure has two fields. And we're going to have one predicate as always. OK, this is perfectly useful. However, given that we have been writing structure definitions almost exactly like this for a while. Let me tell you something that's handy provided by the beginning student language. It turns out that the language already has built in a structure definition that we could use. This is called a POSIN structure. Here's what the structure definition looks like. It looks just like an invader structure, except it's not called an invader, it's called POSIN. It provides us with the four courtesy functions that you might expect. It has a constructor, just like any structure definition. What's a posin? A posin is something made with made posin. The same structure definition gives us two selectors, as you might expect. And it gives us one predicate as always. OK, so we could actually just use this building structure. This structure is so built in that if I just hit the run button right now, the computer is going to be confused. It's going to give me an error message that says the POSIN name was defined in the language already and cannot be redefined. So it's already like someone wrote this line already as part of the beginning student language. So in order to not confuse the computer, we better comment our line out. POSIN is already provided in the language. So we don't need to write a structure definition, yet we can already use the courtesy functions provided. OK. So now you know something extra about the beginning student language. It doesn't really change all the programs you could write because you could have just as well defined the POSIN structure yourself. But it is already defined for you in order to save some typing. 
So now that we have learned about this built-in Poisson structure, we can actually greatly shorten our data definition for what an invader is. We could just say that it is a Poisson because everything in the second half of this definitions window is already provided. So from now on, I'm just going to use the word Poisson to mean the result of calling make Poisson on two numbers. And so I could just say an invader is a Poisson. Now we've defined what an invader is. Again, if we are building a more complex version of the space invaders game where an invader might have not just an X and Y coordinate, but also a shape or whatever, then we would need to not use a posit. But for now, we could use a posit. It is a building structure that happens to fit what we need. Okay. Now, let's write some data definition for not just one invader, but a whole crowd of invaders. This is something that you've done before in this class already. A crowd of invaders could be one of two things. It could be no invaders whatsoever, which means probably that the game is one. In that case, we are going to need some structure to store the fact that there's no invaders left. This structure has no fields. However, this structure definition does already come with some courtesy functions. It comes with a constructor. It comes with no selectors, and it comes with one predicate. Okay. We need to define another kind of crowd of invaders, which is the case where there is at least one invader. And such a structure is going to have two parts, two fields, the first invader and the rest of the crowd of invaders. This new structure definition is going to provide us with four courtesy functions. It's going to give us one constructor. It's going to give us two selectors. And finally, it's going to give us a predicate. OK, so now we are ready to store a whole bunch of invaders, each of which is for now, just a posit. Now, we've seen structures like this several times in this course already, so it might not surprise you that the beginning student language also gives us some built-in structures that would help us save some typing. Let's look at the no invader structure first. There's actually a structure in the beginning student language that is very similar that we can already use and that already comes with the language, so we don't need to define the structure ourselves. Let's look at this structure, which comes with two courtesy functions, and compare that against a building structure that I'm going to tell you now. This building structure is called empty. It has no parts, no fields. Now, given the structure definition I just wrote, you might think that we're going to have two courtesy functions. We're going to have a make empty function, which gives us, I guess, a crowd of invaders. And we're going to have a empty ha function, which is going to be a predicate. OK. And this is almost right, except two things. First of all, the empty structure is built in. So if I hit the run button right now, again, the computer is going to be confused, saying, hey, I've already got something inside the language itself called empty. So let's not use the already defined keyword name empty. So the computer is confused because we're redefining something that's already defined for us. Let's just comment out our definition so that we use the built-in one. The second thing that might be a little surprising is that this constructor is not called make empty that is predefined. Instead, in order to save us some typing, there's a special case that says this constructor is not called make empty, it's just called empty. So in fact, even without writing the structure definition, in fact, I better not write the structure definition and, and uh, comment it out, I can use the word empty. Now, the word empty is 
also sometimes spelled in this funny way, apostrophe, open paren, close paren, together. You could use that spelling yourself if you like, but I think it's easier to just write the word empty. And we already have the predicate empty hunt, even though we didn't define it because it's already defined for us in the beginning student language. Okay, so that already saved us some typing because now we could replace our own structure, no invaders, by this building structure. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Instead of writing make no invaders, I'm just going to write empty. But if you noticed, I didn't write parentheses around empty. And that's another special thing about the word empty that you might have noticed. I could just write the word empty by itself. I'm not able to put parentheses around it because as a special case, to save us some typing, empty in the beginning student language is just a constant. It's not even a function. So we better not write parentheses around empty, unlike all the other constructors we have, like making no invaders. So instead of empty with parentheses around it as if empty were a function, we're just gonna write the word empty because that's a constant. Again, just to save us some typing, that's how it's defined in the beginning student language. So we can actually get rid of all this now. I'm gonna get rid of what I'm not using, but in the code provided online, I'm gonna, for now, keep these comments just so that you are reminded that empty is actually just a building structure with slightly abbreviated names so that we could save some typing. Let's next look at the sum invader structure. We've already defined it, but it turns out that there is a building structure that would also help us save some typing and not have to define the structure ourselves. This structure is called cons, which is short for construction or constructor or construct. Anyway, it's just called cons. It has two fields. They're called first and rest. And again, you might expect, given that this is a structure with two fields in it, to get four courtesy functions, you'll be right. We expect a constructor just like the make some invaders constructor, we expect two selectors, one for getting the first and one for getting the rest. And finally, we expect a predicate called cons huh, just like we have our own predicate some invaders huh. But this is a building structure. So again, don't put this line actually in your code. It's gonna confuse the computer because const is a building structure. I'm just gonna comment it out, but I'm gonna leave it in the code provided for this class for now just so that you are reminded that we have this building structure and we're using it. Again, to save some typing, the names of these courtesy functions are shortened as a special case in the beginning student language. So instead of calling make cons, there's actually nothing called make cons. It's just called cons. The constructor is just called cons, constructor, get it? Similarly, the selector is not called cons first, it's just called first. The selector is not called cons rest, it's just called rest, just to save us some typing. So now we could use this building structure in our data definition for a crowd of invaders instead of our custom self-defined structure. I'm gonna get rid of the self-defined structure because we're not gonna use it. Instead of using make some invaders, we're just gonna use cons. This part is provided to us by this beginning student language. We don't ever have to write it. I'm just writing it here as a reminder. And we have written some data definitions. Using purely building structures, it turns out, posin is building, empty is building, and cons is building. We have not actually written a single line of code code. We've just written some important data definitions. So just as we can already make posin in order to make an invader, we could also make some crowds of invaders. Here's a crowd of invaders. I'm taking 
an invader, which is just a posim, and this is a crowd of invaders because mt is a crowd of invaders, and now we have a crowd of invaders that contains just one invader. I could use this crowd of invaders and put another invader in front of it to make another larger crowd of invaders. Now we have two invaders in a single crowd. So you've seen that data definitions can use some building structures that are provided to us by the beginning student language. And the building structures that are provided include POSIN, MT, and COMS, all of which are very useful. One last thing though, whenever we use the building structures empty and cons to write a data definition that can hold many invaders, many numbers, many strings, many whatevers, let's be consistent about our terminology and always call it a list.